Boom, boom, we're in live, Scott. We came in a little early. I'm doing a little hand thing, and you're not even looking, and I was doing this for you because I thought you would like it. <laughs> I do like it. Woo! I like it a lot. I like it a lot. All right. Uh, we'll talk about what I'll be sampling here in a little bit. Um, I just did a board game show. I know you don't want to talk about it, but I had our Pete, Pete March Madness. You can, you can talk about it. Just don't give what? us the cliff note version. That's all we it, need. It's talking about a game called the Airborne, the last 100 yards. Cliff note. There you go. <laughs> there you go. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. I could get Hold stuck. On, I'm, I'm still getting set up here, too. Let me go pop the chat out. Good. You're good. What's funny is uh, I always have a sample of whiskey on there. So you get your weird crossovers. Like some whiskey people don't want to hear anything about games. And then I'll, someone will ask me, what are you drinking? And I'll start to, and they'll be like, I thought this is a board game channel. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, but you know, we, we enjoy all the finer things of life. All the finer things. Let's see. Malt Minion. Hello, all. I love his thumbnail there. That's cool. Give, give the cliff note version of the day that you went live on the board game channel with a with a whiskey sample and you started reviewing it thinking you was on our channel. Yes, I I uh I hadn't clicked over and I'm running and I'm like few five, six minutes in and I'm going through a full whiskey review. I don't know if I worked in a test. Ad. I don't think I got that in, but then um somebody comes on and says, Bart, I think you're on the, the wrong channel. <laughs> and I looked and I'm like, ooh, ooh, I'm on the, I'm doing a whiskey live on the board game deal. And they were like, ah. And then a bunch of people were like, leave it up, leave it up. So, but I mean, that's pretty easy to do though, because of the way StreamYards is the platform that we use to go live. And you can tie in, I don't know how many channels. If you had 12 channels, you probably tie them all in to, to your one account. Well, yep. we've got, so we've got the Scotch test dummies and then uh, bonding with board games. And then your son, Bo, has his little deal on there too. So you could easily accidentally choose the wrong, if you're not paying attention, I think it defaults to whichever one you used the last time. Yes. Matter of fact, I did something weird when I was setting up the board game deal. I actually clicked. It was showing two highlighted accounts. And I'm like, why? I wonder if they would have both gone out to, I don't know. That I was like, ooh, what? What did I do there? And so, yeah, I don't know. Uh, we got too slow is in. He's already looking forward to it. Uh, whiskey, eh? <laughs> eh? Hey. Whiskey, hey. eh? Sorry, whiskey, I gotta, hey. get, gotta get the Canadian in right. I did yeah. whiskey, eh? <laughs> <laughs> whiskey, eh? Perfect. How goes it, everyone? Guy Davis, look, it's the dumbest. Laugh out loud. Like it. We like it a lot. We got Derek Beckman, Howdy Gents, Jason Bennett. Hi, guys, from uh, from a Glaswegian in Warsaw. Wow. Wow, Warsaw. That's pretty cool. Robert Ligerish is in here from Iron Ooh. Root Republic. We need to uh, – I'm, I'm having some Iron Root withdrawals, Barto. We need to, yeah. we need we need to, to get, get down there. there sometime. We got to get down there. And Robert, I've reviewed these. I've got to get my edit out. I did a two-parter and uh, I was waiting for Scott. Kept thinking it would his taste would come back. And he said, do it. Just film it already. I was like, got it. We'll do. So I did it solo, which always feels weird, Scott. I'm just letting you know. Yeah. There's no one there mocking me doing a doing a doing a look. Well, a 100% pure mustard is asking Scotty, how's the taste buds? They are still not back um fully i'm putting them at about 50 percent now i have a blind sample here uh, the wife came in beforehand and poured me something i have no idea what it is it's written down on a note over here turned upside down and uh <laughs> the i can tell you i nosed it not most of my problem is still connected to my nose i still can't hardly smell anything so i'm getting more taste wise than i am smell wise but this, whatever she poured, I can tell you mm -hmm. there's, I'm, well, I'm pretty sure there's no peat. Um, and other than that, I can't tell you anything much about it. So it's true that like, like a majority of your taste comes from your, your scent, your nose. Yeah. That's what they say. Yep. That's interesting. Maybe a little citrusy, a little fruity, sweet. 
Lokeness says, cheers, gents. You cut in anytime you got another uh, another deal there. Eric Simpson, Eric's drink whiskey is in. Did go scotch test. Now, wait. Ro- now, the thing was, so last year, Robert was, um, was going to get married. We were invited to a wedding down there that I'm sure COVID canceled. Maybe. Hopefully, the wedding still went, Robert. Right. Yeah. How did that go? Yeah. Well, have to update us. So... I see a lot of people tuning in we haven't seen for a while just because we haven't been doing as many lives, but right. Christopher Christian. Moy. Yeah. Take Musket. over some of them. Musket Merv is in. Malt Minion, you had him up. Hell's Wid. Leo Chav. Jeff Pickering. Ben Mark Sacro. Slinger, Gene Parker. Ooh, Nurse, Nurse Dave Shaven World. Patreon supporter. So are many. Nurse Nurse Dave's shaving. Let's see his comment. Highlight that sucker. Scott <laughs> and Bart, how's this long distance relationship working out for you guys? Well, I'll tell you what. The it, I want I, the first month was okay. Say end of November, first part of December, just just kind of taking a break and stepping back and not doing as much. But I'm ready to get going again. <laughs> yeah, we had a little hiatus and and yeah, I'm like, come on, man. You know, I kind of. You know, I'm at I, having withdrawals. Actually, I need to I feel the need for speed. Right. Ooh, I saw the trailer, the extended trailer for Top Gun 2. It looks good, dude. Oh. When it, well, you had the Top Gun quote in there, so I had to get in there. Is that, oh, is that what that's for? I just, yeah, I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't realize that I was I feel Top the Gun. need, the need for speed. So I, I saw a whole behind the scenes thing where they were actually using all these Navy aircraft and they did all this new filming techniques. So... It's not CGI, and it looks pretty darn cool. Ooh, we got married, but no wedding. Just adopted a new puppy today. <laughs> well, there you go. There's your COVID wedding right there. My dog, uh, my German Shepherd, had knee surgery last Wednesday. Oh, he has the cone of shame on. He he's says, got the cone on. Picture. Yeah, yeah. Got, looks like he's got a hog leg because all the furs shaved off. I wanted to come over. I felt so sad. He's like, nah, he'll get excited if you come over. Which I'm pretty sure he tore his knee up a couple of years ago when he was playing with Karina. Yep, and those are two shepherds. We took him to the dock at the time, but when then we took him to the dock, he wasn't limping. And the doctor said, well, we'll have to put him under if you wanted x-rayed. And unless it starts bothering him, just leave it be. So a couple of years later, it was bothering him pretty bad. I mean, he was really favoring it, hardly using it to walk on. And we thought, yeah, we need to get it checked. And so he had to have knee surgery. That's a, well, I tell you what, I mean, it's like having a little kid that's had surgery around. I mean, you got to, we had to get a little pin to put him in. You can't can't be up walking around. You got to, you got to put a boot on his uh, bandage before you take him outside for him to go potty on a leash every time. He's Which whining. He's I'm sure he's in pain. So, I mean, he's been, you know, whining and whimpering. Ugh. Well, and he's a free bird too, baby. He likes to just go wherever he wants to go. <laughs> so he's got a dislike that. But yeah, he felt, he looked so sad with the cone of shame on. I wanted to come over and see him. And you were like, nah, he'll get excited. And, you know, and I'm like, yeah, you're right. So uh, Real quick too. Um, I was notified Friday. Scotch Trooper had gone into hospice care. Uh, yeah. His pancreatic cancer had um, kicked in pretty good. Not a good sign. Um, so a lot of activity on Instagram reference him. I haven't had any updates since, so I'm not yeah. sure where we're standing. I know. I went and read his GoFundMe page, and I think it was in November. He talked about how they went in and they were looking at doing something called like the Whipple surgery or something, and but they had to check. And uh, instead, they found cancerous lesions on his liver, and then they told him, not only can you not do the surgery, that means you're stage four pancreatic cancer, and apparently there's not much they can do at that point. So and then he had a, had a Han Solo quote that I couldn't finish reading, so. Yeah. Uh, this was a special bottling that Alexander Murray and company did. It's a 27 year old Brook Lottie that they did for Scotch Trooper himself. I just got this the other day. 
Really? And I'll have to find – there was a limited run. I'll have to see – I believe all the proceeds went right to Scotch Trooper from it. It was a hell of a bottling from Alexander Murray and company. Wow. Pretty That's neat. cool. That's very cool. So I don't remember the GoFundMe page, uh, but I mean, you, I think it's Scotch Trooper. You can find it. There. Yeah, you can go to, yeah, go to GoFundMe and just go to Scotch Trooper. So, and that, yeah, I mean, anybody that wants to help out, their family's still going to need some <laughs> some help. So go to GoFundMe, look up Scotch Trooper and give him five, throw five, ten dollars his way. <clears throat> All right, let's get into what I got here anyway. Citrus and fruit on the nose. That's about it. <laughs> That's it. That's all you got. All right. I'll let you work through that. I'm going to be sampling. This is an SMWS. And this is their, um, what do they call this? this is their their uh, vaults. Do they call these the vaults? I forget what the special name. Yeah, the vaults collection 2020. This is a 38-year-old. This is the 95.39. I need to look that up. It's called Indian Summer in a Japanese Garden. Indian Summer in a Japanese Garden. Love the presentation. Very nice display box. And, uh, of course, the ribbon and everything that goes along with the vaults collection. So, very nice. Um, we do have a, uh, we have a cowbell. Oh. Um, that came in there if you wanted to give it a little bit of cowbell treatment. <laughs> Woo! More cowbell. And I like the thumbnail there, too. Cheers, dummies. From uh, Mr. Whiskey Shits. <laughs> <laughs> I needed a little chuckle. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. That was good. All right. Let's see. I'm getting hot. This is high ABV. I'm just getting vanilla and citrus, really. We got uh, Bruno Amad Amadou in from Brazil. Hello, Bruno. <laughs> ah. Lots and lots of it's like Sherry Oloroso or PX on this one. Uh, you'll need to come try this one when your noser is good. Mm -hmm. Looks like you are holding up very strong, Scott. Do you think your taste buds will improve? I strongly hope it will. All the luck to you. Apu, Apu de Geest. Mm -hmm. um, thanks. Yeah, I mean, it's. I, I, I don't know that it, there's anybody out there that's lost their taste completely permanent or per permanently. It'll come back. It's coming back a little bit. And I'm pretty sure it's really just tied into my sense of smell. As soon as I can get that going, the taste will soon to be soon to follow. Yeah. Yep. It is bizarre. Cause I mean, I lost, I was down to about only 10% for 10 days. And so was my wife. And I remember uh, she, we had some pink lemonade. She poured it and she, she started yelling like, whoop, 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 whoop. And I was like, what, what? I thought we won the lottery or something. I didn't know what happened. She's like, I can taste it all at once. It was a flood. And, and I was like, what? And then I went and poured some and I'm like, nothing. It's like 10%. I got nothing. And then the next day, same thing. So it just literally like turned on. And then it felt like an explosion of flavors. So, cowbell. More cowbell, sir. That is great. Cy say that name. Cyclos Ker. Bongo. I would say Kerbongo, or could it be Kerbanjo? Yeah, it could be. I think it's Bongo. Kerbongo. Kerbongo. Cyclos Kerbongo. Kerbongo. Cheers, mates. Hope you're well, Scott. God bless. <laughs> What? Oh, Ben loves this story, Bart. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, yeah. Taste whatever you want. <laughs> German friend. German friend. So. Uh, <laughs> I get Elmer's glue on the nose. Oh. oh, no. Oh, look at this. I like Michael. He tries to collect long sleeve Hawaiian shirts. So far, I haven't found any short <laughs> sleeves, probably, but not no long sleeves. He's working on the collection, though. 
Love it. Scott, Uncle Meg drink whiskey. All right. This is a high proof, high ABV, single malt. Well, it's um this could be a blend, but it's a scotch. It's not a bourbon. It's only X bourbon cask. Really? Other than that, I mean, so that's pretty good. Yeah. Are you gonna look at the note? Yep, let's see what it is. Oh wow. Uh oh. What is it? Parker's Heritage. Ooh. Barrel finish. That's an orange curacao bourbon. Man, you're so good with that. No, that's I wasn't anywhere near it. No, just knowing like even where that is on your shelf is what I mean. Oh. <laughs> like, like I would have been like, I got that. And you would have been like, yeah, it's third shelf, fifth over yeah. from the left. And I would have been like, what? You would have been like, yeah, it's got that cool gold embossed lettering. I would have been like, God dang. Sorry. I know you missed it a little bit, but how you know? Well, I mean, it's just, I mean, I called it, a, I thought it was a single model. I don't get any of the bourbon notes, but the orange curacao is really over, is really uh, strong in that bourbon. So, yeah, interesting. Hmm. Very good. Very good. Oh, we're going to be up for 30 minutes. So we're just over halfway in. Uh, here we go. I love, this is why we like it. I got a fever and the only prescriptions, more cowbell. Exactly. <laughs> Derek Beckman, hundred percent. Oh man. We did oh, just man. pick this up the other day too, Bart, for us. Once we get going again, the Akil Homan Fino Sherry matured yes. 2020 edition. Love Kilhoman. That surprised me. That Kilhoman cast strength, the very first Pete shootout we did, um, I picked it blind. Mm. And I was uh, stunned. And I've kept one on hand ever since. I had a bunch of uh, um, like barrel picks or, or uh, liquor store barrel picks that were down at total that I picked up. Our total and specs, the specs ones is who had them. Mm -mm -mm. What's Michael got here? My New Year's resolution was to get to the point where I am no longer shopping at plus sizes unlimited. Wow. I'm always looking for a long tall. So every <laughs> once in a while, a distillery will send us some shirts and I usually get a large or an extra large, and then I look like uh, my a little poo belly sticks out just a bit. It's not attractive. <laughs> <laughs> Scott's like, no, nah, you can't wear that. I'm like, I know, I know. I like it, though, but I can't. Indy Ingot, hot dummies. So, yeah, we're trying to get Scott's, you know, once his taster's back, we'll be back in. I'm with you. We've been on hiatus. I like it. Um, you know, your uh, 99 days and still no, uh, no taste shows have been good. I've been doing some quick hitters. Those are always fun. But uh, I do miss being uh, literally, you're right here, boom, and you'll be bumping on me and stuff. Bumping on me. That doesn't sound right, but uh, yeah. I miss you bumping on me. <laughs> yeah, your wife's going to be like, what? What's that? It's like when, you was, when we was in Ireland, you said I was slagging on – or I was shagging on um, Seamus. Yeah, Seamus Duggan. Well, no, Seamus said, what kind of phrases have you picked up? And I go, oh, I've been uh, shagging on Bru on Scott a lot. And he's like, what? I, I don't think you got the right meaning on it. I said, give him a slagging. Yeah, I go, giving him a hard time. He goes, slagging, slagging. You need to work that one out. You don't want to make that mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Seamus. So yeah, yesterday would have been thirteen, my thirteenth week since I got COVID, or since I lost my palate. Goodness. Yeah. So thirteen weeks in a day. What is that? Ninety-one, ninety-two days. It's like you're having a baby. <laughs> you got months. You got weeks and months down. <laughs> that was one of the deals. I always hated. You'd run into somebody. Oh, how old's your kid? And, some lady would tell me, you know, like, oh, you know, like um, 61 weeks. And I'd go, I have no idea what that is. Well, we can go to the months already. Come on. Please. Quit doing the weeks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
All right, let's see. Got about 10 minutes. Slagging and shagging. Hold on, let me get that up. The language of my people. Hi from the UK, guys. Hello. I'm trying to decipher the name. Pineapple men? <laughs> Pineapple. Mon? Raymond Fortner. I don't know what it is. What is that? You're right. What is that? Pineapple 3M Forn. 3M Forn. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Scott, uh, how are you with habaneros? Normally really good. There's the well, I mean, yeah, spice I can tell. Even when I lost, um, com- when it was completely gone, you could tell. You, I could still tell spicy. So, I mean, and I was, I was, I had to put habanero seasoning and sauce on all my food at first, just so I could get something. I couldn't tell it was habanero or jalapeno or anything like that. You just tell it was spicy. It was just burning the, the tongue, really, make you sweat. And still, most stuff I make, I'm still throwing Tabasco or some habanero seasoning or salsa, something on, just to try to get it going, try to taste something. We got Hassler. When my friend who worked as a clown died, everyone went to the funeral in one car. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, we shouldn't laugh. We shouldn't laugh yeah. at that. That was oh, yeah. sorry it for is, your loss. It is pineapple man. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, that was right. You were right. Uh, what are we at? Carino, Carino one. Greetings, Bart and Scott. Still Corona free down here in the hot zone. Very nice. Florida, he's Florida, right? Is he no, Florida? Uh, he's down in uh, Arizona. He's he's our Del Bach source. That's right. That's right. I hear the hot zone, and I'm always thinking uh, Florida. Kind of are you same reaching? Back of his woods, we actually had Cool Keegan sent us their uh, 10th anniversary mm. um, that right when I got at the first year when I got COVID and or the right at the first when I got COVID and lost my taste. And so we're still waiting to kind of put something out on that as well. Uh, it's a single malt whiskey from Santa Fe, New Mexico, Sherry Cask finished four mm. years old. It was done for their 10, 10 year anniversary. So I really look forward to that, but sorry guys. Uh, we got you on our list, but I know we've had Paul John as well. <laughs> since some I could, yeah, <laughs> I could, uh, I ought to just give this to you and have you to at least put something out on it, you know, in a little solo review, at least I'll do it for the team. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll take one for the team, brother. Uh, Cameron Lochner says, can't wait for your review of compass box. Felicitas. 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 Felicitas, and maybe the new magic cask. Oh, Lordy. So that sounds great. If you want me to taste those for you, I'll do that you too. This one. Mm. No, no, that's hedonism. Hey, you need to give me those. <laughs> Where is my Felicitas at? Maybe I got it. I, I came over there and took it. Oh, no, that is it. Hedonism, Felicitas. Yeah. Woo. Dang it. I don't even know, but I want to. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I'm really feeling, feeling for you, Scott, as James Brower. Ooh, ooh, this is not a uh, a festival whiskey. Dang it, which means it is. <laughs> it's not because the festival was canceled. Oh, that's so true. Not, that's true. This is not a festival whiskey. Oh my goodness! Look at you. Even though at the oh. same time, Bart, Peep Monster, Arcana. Ooh, what? God, man. Their original Peep Monster is what got me into becoming a peat head. Adam Shepard just posted, I'm new to whiskey. I love the Beaumore 12. Should I try Ardbegger Lafroig next? Yes. Um, yeah. I mean, if you love Beaumore, what you're going to want to do is try them all. And, uh, and then see, you know, I used to be a Lafroy guy and then we did a bunch of blinds and I switched over to Ardbeg. Um, so yeah, you've got great things going on there. Try some, uh, some of the, um, oh, well, you got all kinds over there. So I was going to say the, the Brook Lotties are good. The peated ones. So, all right, let's see. 
Uh, yeah, Ard- Ardbeg, Ardbeg and or Lefroy both would be good ones to go to next from. Very, very much so. From Bomore 12. Um, let's see. Hey, Whiskey in the Six is in here. Oh, I clicked on it. Oh, it jumped on me. Sorry. Boom. What's up, gentlemen? What's up, Rob? So what else? There, yeah, the Port Charlotte. Mm, very good. Very, very good. If you get a chance, try that peat monster from Compass. That is such a smooth and light peat that uh, that is literally where I was like, I love this. And then I started searching out more peat. Uh, Derek found two new cask bottlings of Glendronic the other day. Hmm. Really heard uh, this one came in for us too since I've had COVID Westward single malt whiskey from Oregon. Ooh, I and, like that. Uh, American, American single malt. Hmm. Mer- American, 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 American single malt. That's how they need to they need to bill it. American single malt. We've got. I mean, there's no. There's no uh, loss of business on our end. It's just freaking trying to be able to taste stuff. Like I said, I will step in to the breach and I will take it. Send it my way. <laughs> I will step into the breach, my friend. I will just, I'll just shoulder it. Just go in. Petey Tang. I like that. That would be a good username. Petey Tang. <laughs> Petey Tang is what the Scottish astronauts take to the moon. I think Petey Tang sounds awesome. Whoa, Claire the Third's on, saying something mean about us. You got the new Jack Daniels Rye Barrel Proof? <laughs> Do not. Haven't seen that one yet. Mm-mm. I like the regular double barrel is what we call it. Mm-mm-mm. I'm still loving Petey Tang. All right, how did you – we haven't even had a chance to talk about season two of The Mandalorian. Surely you're caught up. That's Oh, that's been over for a month. I know, but who knows? Maybe your eyes weren't working either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's the first thing I did on Fridays when that was coming out. Oh, yeah. Now it's uh, WandaVision. Have you been watching WandaVision? Man, Bo wanted to, and we watched the very first one. It's like the yeah. black and white riff on Dick Van Dyke. And yeah, I, like, in there. I wasn't thrilled with the first one either, but uh, uh, it starts picking up, and the fourth one that just came out is a killer. Yeah, I mean, they're, it's, yeah. All right. My Bo and I, Bo is like, what is this? I go, well, there's this great show I actually loved watching in syndication called Dick Van Dyke, and it's a riff on it almost right down to the set. But it's not as funny as the original Dick Van Dyke show. And he's like, this sucks. Is this what TV was like? I'm like, no, this is not what TV was like. <laughs> All right. We'll have to, we'll have to try it. So we'll have yeah, to yeah, yeah, hang in there. In, in the second episode, they kind of start tying some stuff in. And they're really good in the third. But the fourth is, uh, is, uh, it's, it's worth hanging in there for. So All right. it All explains right. a lot of what's going on. Okay. I kept thinking they were going to, I thought they were going to do this Dick Van Dyke spinoff for like three minutes and then it kept going. And I'm like, this is it. Yeah. It's horrible. I wasn't thrilled with the first one either. I was like, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be watching this one. We'll see what happens. (laughs) I hung it. I stayed with it though. I'm glad I did. You did good. Now, if anybody doesn't want any spoilers mute now, but uh, Boba Fett. Oh my God. You know how much I love Boba Fett. And watching him just go to town without the armor and then with the armor. And then the fact that there's going to be a spinoff called the book of Boba Fett. Who somebody even he's barely squeezing into that armor though. Nowadays, ain't he? He, Boba Fett's put on a couple of, he's had a couple of extra sandwiches in the last 20 (laughs) years. Well, first of all, they're going to have a body double in the suit. (laughs) (laughs) Second of all, uh, probably once you get the gig and you're like, oh, yeah, then right now he's probably on, uh, you know, seafood diet or something because, uh, you know, whatever it would take, you'd be in it. You get to play that character. Wow. That's good right there. Claire the Third, he didn't get WandaVision at first, but it got better and explained more. 
Scott Moody says the fourth one division's a hitter. Got it. Yep. Boba Fett is getting fat, and he still whoops it. Yep. <laughs> Man, when he has that, what is it, a gaffy stick? The the sand? Uh, the, uh, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah. My, he's going to town. I was like, because I'm like, how are they going to make him now? He's got to be better than, uh, than the Mando, and uh, there's no doubt. I was like, ooh, this is good. This Need your so teacher good. that says, uh, your my mama is so fat, so fat. <laughs> yeah, I do need that. I'll start wearing that. That's all my fat shirts, man. I got all these fat shirts. What do we got from Big Dog? Mary There's Sue. A website called the Mary Sue that does a good job of keeping up with one division and things like that. Huh. I haven't seen it. But all I know is uh, Dave Filoni and Favro. Hello. They need to just take over the whole thing. They know what they're doing, and uh, they keep it fresh and new and stay true all at the same time. That's not an easy thing to do. See, uh, I want the thing is, though, they keep introducing people uh, on The Mandalorian and, and like ah Ahsoka Tano, but I want her to be a recurring character. I just don't want her in one episode. You know, I want – let's bring him in. Well, but one thing Filoni's doing – is because everything was made non-canon, he's bringing it back in. So now Ahsoka is canon. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff that's going on like that. So, and then uh, what the rumor is, she's getting her own show along with uh, what's her name, the the Drop Trooper, or the Drop. Uh, no, it is yeah. Drop Trooper. Gina Carano's character. Um... Speaking of barely fitting into armor. <laughs> so. I did. I dig it though. That's my kind of woman right there. <laughs> but see, she was in Deadpool. Yeah, Cara Dune. There you go, Derek. Yeah, she was in Deadpool and wow. And then seen a couple of her fights and holy moly, she was like ripped. What is this? Seems like Filoni and Favreau are listening to the fans, which is great. No, it's beyond listening. They're fans. But yeah, they are. Yeah, themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And Filoni is the expert. So Filoni got hired. He was working on King of the Hill. He was an animator and he gets a call and hey, he goes in to interview with, he didn't know it. And he goes into a room and it's just George Lucas. And then they start riffing back and forth on, on Star Wars and he gets the job and he, uh, he ends up going into the Clone Wars and doing all that and learning directly i mean it was just phenomenal sorry but that's why feloni is i mean he's like the understudy of, of he, he, yeah it is i mean real quick uh raymaster brings up the expanse i've cranked out i've binge watched five seasons of that in about two days that's a, that is a great show if you haven't watched the expanse do that yeah yeah well i've been reading the expanse forever so that's the only thing nothing compares to the book the shows are still good, but every once in a while, I'm like, what? How did they get past this and that and that? And then I'm like, okay, but okay. Back to the Mandalorian then real quick. Um, there's there's some extras uh, with that if you go watch just to like season one. Yeah, and it's, got uh, one. it's an hour or two longer. There's several shows to it that breaks it down from yeah. the, the set that they're using and how they're doing the special effects was just outstanding. Called the volume. But, but Filoni... Um, he was directing other movies and stuff with just a big Star Wars geek. And he gets a call from Lucas Studios, you know, say, hey, we want you to come work on this project. And he thought it was someone playing a prank on him. Yeah. I think it's, I think this was Filoni. No, it is. They're, like, they're talking to him. They're like, hey, you know, we're doing this project with Star Wars and we want you to be involved. He's like, yeah, yeah, you bet. I'll be there. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, sure. He's sure, thinking, you know, just buddy, Steve pranking yeah, him. Rick. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be right <laughs> down there, Rick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. Not interested. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> they knew he's such a Star Wars fan. He was sure he's being punked. <laughs> <laughs> then he realizes it's real. I was like, hold on. Is this real? Yeah, I, I am so sorry. Yeah. When, when do you need me? So, but that's the key. That's what I like is he's coming from that fan perspective. So he remembers everything from the youth, but then he's bringing it forward. And then what he does with Clone Wars 
And now how he's bringing all that back in. I mean, that's really good. And then he worked on Rebels as well, the animated stuff. So, no, we're in good times. Now, this is where I was thinking it would be with the movies, and it wasn't. Raymaster, or Big Dog is saying to Raymaster, he needs a friend like Amos to help him work on my list. Amos from uh, The Expanse. I like Amos. That's a that's a good character right there. Oh, Amos is good. He's dark. He's been everywhere. Yeah. He's non-emotional. Just Yeah. Oh, you don't want to make a joke like, I wish that guy over there would disappear because he'd be like, really? Yeah. He'd be like, whoa, I was just joking. Okay. I was joking. Where are you going, like, are you going to the bathroom? Uh-uh. I took care uh, of that dude for you. Yeah. Said, Kill him. He's the, one, he's the one that hurt kids. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Amos. Right, we'll wrap it up, Art. You bet. The Mandalorian is still a bit too woke to fully love. No, it isn't. Christopher Malloy. The Mandalorian's awesome. That's just me. I love it. I can. Well, the only thing I was really disappointed, I wasn't disappointed, but the only time I really felt a Disney tie in was when the Mando did the raid on the prison, the ship that was transporting the prisoners with his, uh, he was called in to help his old buddies out and they, yeah. they double cross him and leave him to basically they imprison him on the ship and are going to leave him. And then he gets out and he doesn't kill him. He lets them all, he lets them all live and goes on. Right. I was like, eh, it felt like a Disney tie in right there. You can't kill the people that were going to leave you for dead. Yeah, I thought they were all dead too. But I did hear that, uh, well, um, they wanted more of uh, uh, Bill Burr. And I, so I don't know if it was where they were like, hey, we want to bring him back. Because, of course, he's in that one episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But they liked it so much. That, to me, that was one of my favorite episodes. And it was the most stark. Uh, but I'm with you. I thought there's a there's no way I don't think any of them would have lived. Well, heck, look at the... Look at the star base there, whatever it was, the platform that gets killed when they roll in. That was Filoni in the X-Wing, by the way. Oh, so, was it? Yeah. He was one of the ones in the X-Wing that blows that up. <laughs> so, all right. See, we, we, we'd we probably have like a million followers if we just talked Star Wars. <laughs> if we were the uh, we were the Star Wars dummies, we'd be like, two million viewers. Woo! You know, and they'd be like, we love you guys. So that's all right. Uh, for those tuning in late and they want to know about my palate, I thought I was drinking a high proof single malt scotch and it's a Parker's heritage bourbon. So mm -hmm. my palate is still not fully back. And um, anybody, if you get scotch trooper, we received word on Friday that he had entered hospice care with his pancre pancreatic cancer. Not good. I haven't had any, heard any updates since, but um, if you got a few extra dollars, head over to GoFundMe and scotch trooper, page and throw an extra couple dollars his way family will be able to use it yep good point all right scotch it you scotch gods it's launch you dummies yep. see you guys later winding her down gotta click two buttons